Hello, Jennifer with Divine Threefold. Welcome. I hope everyone is doing wonderful today. And today it's vlog day. I thought I would do a vlog today. And we are discussing uh, should you still exercise when you have an injury? And this is such a common question asked by all of us and especially myself, uh, I have struggled with this in the past. I know if you've been following me, you have heard me talk about it. Uh, that is always so difficult for me to um, feel like, oh my, I get sort of panicky, like, oh, I cannot work out. Uh, you know, I'm going to lose all my progress. I'm going to just, you know, waste away. So I get very, and plus for me, Exercising is very therapeutic and I get so much from it, not just the physical aspect. So when I feel like I'm, you know, oh my gosh, I shouldn't exercise, it's it's this kind of panicky fear that comes over me. So that's also why this subject is very close to my heart. But uh, it's, again, I think a question that all of us have. And I think in the past, for years and years, we're conditioned to feel or think that we should not move, should not exercise, and when we have some sort of injury. So now let's just get it out of the way first. It depends on your injury, of course. Uh, we are talking about maybe an injury that reoccurs, you've had it before, um, you know, it could be something you've just done, some, you know, you've pulled something, uh, you have an ongoing kind of pinched nerve that you experience often. So these are the kind of things we're talking about. Um, I'm not talking about that you just had surgery or back surgery or, uh, you know, a sh shoulder procedure or knee surgery. Okay, that's totally different than what we're talking about here. And that is something that is very different on what your doctor will recommend you do or don't do. Um, and there is more of a waiting period with a surgery. Um, if you've been cut open, again, whole different ball game. So let's not get that confused with what we're talking about here today. And of course, I am not a doctor. So even though my husband says I think I am, but I am not. And um, please, the first thing you do without ever hesitation is see your doctor. Um, if you have a new injury, of course, especially see your doctor first to get his opinion on what you should do. So please don't, you know, take this as um, I am giving my clearance for exercise or telling you to move when you're injured or anything like that, please. So this is just something uh, I constantly ponder over and I wanted to share what I have learned in my experience. So please see your doctor first. But again, what I have learned and what science is also showing us is that movement is better than none. So when you hurt yourself or you have an old injury or you've tweaked something, you have some sort of weird twinge, you know, oh my gosh, do should I exercise? Well, the answer is it may not be yes in all ways, uh, but should you move? Yes. So you should move your body. Um, we can definitely replace something that we are normally doing with something else, but you definitely want to keep the body moving. And we have learned that this is important um, rather than just kind of, we, we create this fear, um, this fear of wanting to guard and protect our brokenness or our broken piece that we have injured in our body. And so we want to kind of just, we tense up and that can be right there. Um, definitely does us a disfavor when we kind of, all of our muscles, we can become very tensed and our muscles all tighten. And this is because we are as humans kind of trying to protect that pain. Uh, but what we do, we end up doing again a disfavor because that is not going to help us and it does not promote healing when our muscles are all tensed and tight. So this is why keeping moving is that idea of keeping everything, uh, you know, moving is going to stop that from happening. Also, we tend to, you know, um, inhibit healing 
because um, we're kind of prone to, okay, well, let me take an ibuprofen and I can keep going, or let me take an ibuprofen and just lay here and do nothing and not move. And again, another way that that will totally do a disfavor for us. Um, our muscles can tend to go through that atrophy very quickly. So that's when kind of our muscles just stop being used and, you know, they break down. So this is something we don't realize and we're learning that it does happen a little quicker than we'd like to think. Um, so that's also, again, something to remember. Uh, our muscles can begin that atrophy process quickly and it also even after just not doing anything it can even uh you know tell our nervous system uh to stop recruiting these muscles so this is not good in the long run so that's why it's very important um we have learned and i've learned just in my past experience that moving is better than just clamming up and tightening up and sitting on the couch and just popping ibuprofen. We also know with ibuprofen, it can be wonderful because it works really well for the pain. But at the same time, uh, taking an anti or abusing anti, you know, inflammatories are definitely going to set us up for trouble in the long run. Uh, it definitely kind of stops the healing process when we take the, uh, ibuprofen it kind of like I said our bodies are created to inflame and that's when all these blood cells uh, attack that area to heal it so when we pop these ibuprofens we tend to stop that from happening so not to say now I take ibuprofen because sometimes it's needed and you are really uncomfortable so that's not to say that it can't be beneficial but it is known that we don't want to just, you know, first thing we do and continuously pop ibuprofens just because it, it can. It can inhibit the, the healing process. So that is something to remember. Um, but again, sometimes ibuprofen can help get us to point A to point B, and sometimes that is necessary. So not to say that that's a horrible thing. Um, but... I also feel like, uh, you know, you can start to just pop them regularly. And again, we know they also do a lot of harm in our body elsewhere, in our stomach lining, and they're very harsh on the body. So on that note, um, remember those things. Now let's talk about uh, what can we do? What exercise can we do? And what I like to do is, and you know I'm a firm believer and very passionate about, this is the time when I feel like I have a little tweak or injury, this is the time that I really take that time to do my relaxing the body and doing the stretching, more stretching, moving in a more gentler way and doing other things or replacing our activities with other activities that are going to be a little more gentler on our body when we're hurt or injured. So I definitely believe in that. Now, I think that there's certain things we should avoid. I mean, say you're not going to go do it. I wouldn't recommend doing a HIIT workout, high intensity. You're going to be fatiguing the body. And then we know sometimes that then we can get injured from just that because we become fatigued, then we're not using proper form and then so on and so on. So that is something very important. Um, there are definitely things that you would want to avoid when you have some sort of injury. So HIIT, some high intensity, trying a new exercise unless it's something like yoga or, but even that, I would not recommend trying a new exercise when you're injured. It's just because, yeah, I would say that was a good, that would be a word of caution. But there are so many different things that you can still keep your body moving in a gentle way to protect the injured area, but also keep everything else active. And moving the injured, injured area depending on what kind of injury it is. Now, if we have something broken, then yes, we are maybe in a cast and we don't want to move that part of our body. So, but I'm talking about other muscle related tendon pulls and sprains, you know, easy sprains in that way. We can work around those, but walking, uh, just walking on a treadmill, if that's all you can do, just taking a walk around the block. So just moving the body will be wonderful and is enough 
and is okay. So, and you will feel better. Um, I notice with sometimes things that I have, like my neck, especially, I kind of tweak my neck a lot. It's a very common thing for me. And I notice that if I just lay around, it it's worse. I'm in a lot more pain. So if I start to move more and stretch and try and really focus on relaxing my body, I feel so much better. So these are the things that I think is wonderful to really take advantage. Since we all struggle with getting enough of that relaxation in, when you kind of feel not your best and you don't have the energy or you have an injury or you have some sort of twinge or tweak, that is the best time to really take that time that we need all the time to relax the body and the mind and work on that. Um, just a good, I have a couple good videos on my channel of just relaxing the body and stretching and it's wonderful work. So this is the time you do those type of workouts. I think that's the best time. But if you are doing the relaxing the body videos and doing that regularly, you are going to also be less prone to experience an injury. So that is why it's so key for us to be taking that time to always stretch and relax the body just as much as we work the body. So just remember to take that time for yourself. And on another note, I'm not done yet because I have a life update. I love sharing um, these life, my divine threefold journey and my life update with you all. Um, and that's why I love these because again, um, I like to share my divine threefold journey and what's going on in my world and in my uh, life. And that's where a lot of these vlogs come from is something that I am worrying or dealing with myself. So that's why I like to share. And again, my journey is your journey. Your journey is my journey. I believe that we are all in this and on this journey and together. So that's so something I feel deeply about. So we get caught up in thinking, um, you know, mine and yours, and but it's ours and we are all one and together. So I love sharing that with you all. And I'd love to hear your feedback as well. Um, that's so important to me. So please do so. Please uh, leave in the comment section below. Um, it makes my day to get some sort of feedback on um, you know, my video. So I love that. But yes, on my life update. So we have gotten orders. So if you don't follow my channel, you may not even know that I'm a proud army spouse. My husband is a U.S. soldier and we are uh, moving around the globe and we are in Indiana and we just got orders. We have them actually really early. Normally, um, well, with my experience, we didn't you know, receive the orders as early, but we know quite a bit in advance this time. We're not leaving until June, so we've got a ways to go, but we already have the orders, which is unusual. Sometimes when the soldier re-enlists, and depending on um, the timing, that can happen, but this is the first time that we know this much in advance for us, so it kind of feels a little strange that I know so soon um, but yes, we are um, going to uh, be moving June. I believe my husband has to report June 20th of next year. So, well, 2020 it will be. Oh my gosh. But we um, are going to Fort Lewis, um, Washington State in Tacoma. And yeah, we're so excited about that. Um, we had that on our list uh, or our choice in the army a lot of times well you don't always get a choice but the army really does try and try and accommodate and get your choices so normally you pick three so you'll pick a couple stateside choices and then an overseas choice so we did not get our choice the last two duty stations um our first duty station we did get a choice so uh, that was Colorado. We're new in the Army as well. I mean, we're not new, but we are new because normally people join a little later in life. Um, people do, sorry, people do not join a little later in life. My husband joined later in life, which is unusual. 
So um, he did turn 37 or 36 in boot camp, which is very old for the army. <laughs> Poor thing, but it didn't stop him. He's done wonderful, and the age has actually been a total advantage for him rather than a disadvantage. So it's been great. But our first duty station, we did get our own, our first choice, and that was like, wow, that was so cool. We were like, this is great. And we got Colorado Springs, and we were in Colorado for three years. And then we did not get our last two choices. Then we ended up in upstate New York which we were like, what? Oh my gosh, why, what, are we, what are we doing? But we loved upstate New York. I mean, I don't know if anyone out there, I'm sure I've got people from upstate, but beautiful, we loved it there. We loved it. A lot of snow, but we loved, we loved it there. We found love, it's beautiful. So we were happy there. Uh, we were there for three years and then we ended up in Indiana. We thought, wait, wait, we didn't have this on our list. But my husband here is on a recruiting assignment. So with recruiting, you can end up anywhere. And it was told to us that with recruiting, it was it's exciting if you get that assignment because that can be a perk that, oh, you kind of get to choose on where you want to be. And a lot of times they like to put you in like your hometown because, you know, you know the people, you know the area. Uh, you know the community, so you're an asset as a recruiter there, but that was not the case with us. We ended up in Indiana like what? So, but we fell in love with Indiana as well, so we definitely, um, we're both the type of people, we'll make the best of where we're at, and we've done so, and yeah, every place, every place has its beauty, you know, that is so true, like everywhere you go, they, there is beauty all around you, every state, this is such a beautiful planet planet i mean so anyway so we have enjoyed all of our uh experiences all of our duty stations and now we are off to washington we're a little sad i guess i'm more sad but we bought a home here our first home in indiana and we love it so that's going to be difficult for me so i'm gonna have to leave the house and i'm going to rent it out which I'm not looking forward to, but um, it is what it is. So this is how uh, it works in the army life. So, but we are very blessed and we are very thankful. Uh, and my husband and myself uh, very happy to. Um, he is loves serving his country, and yeah, it's great. So, anyways, I just wanted to update on that and give you a piece of what's going on in my world. But again, we're not going till June. So um, we got a ways to go, but keep moving the body. And I hope you've got something from this and let me know. I would love to hear. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time.